everyone, and welcome to another episode of Leading from the Library, our Future Ready Librarian podcast series. And today I am super thrilled because I get to be here with one of my bestest friends, Alyssa. Hi, Alyssa. You. I miss you. I miss you too. I'm so happy you're here. And, and let's you. just let's start by just having you introduce yourself and say where you're at and what your role is at your school. Okay, so my name is Alyssa Malaspina. I am a the high school librarian at Barona High School in Barona, New Jersey. And I also wear another hat where I am a member of the South Orange Maplewood Board of Education in South Orange, New Jersey. So I'm coming to you now from my house in South Orange, New, lovely South Orange, New Jersey. Oh, awesome. I know. With, it's... My, with Barkley behind me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, always, it's always good to have, you know, some dog presence on the yeah. show. And so, we <laughs> well, as... Alyssa and I were talking right before we went live. She said something that really resonated with me. And we talk a lot about our roles as leaders. And Alyssa and I have had great conversations over the years. But in her new role as a school board member, and as we talk about other roles that librarians can have, she said something that just really like spoke to my heart. And so we're going to talk today about stepping up and taking a lead as librarians. I think that is just a pretty powerful statement. And so what's going on in your head right now around that topic? So I think that this is a topic that's really um, something that I'm very passionate about because I've seen through this year, I've been on the school board since last, this coming, this January. So like this whole sort of school year and um, that, we need more people on the school board and in, in positions of power that understand the role of librarians mm -hmm. and that understand the roles that librarians and others can play in a school. I speak all the time with other superintendents, other administrators, and I always ask them because I've taken some grad classes. So I have my administrative cert certification. I've done administration. Do you know, do, when did they talk about the librarians? Mm -hmm. And they're like, they don't. They're like, I just had a conversation recently with my superintendent about this. And I was like, hey, you know, when, when, when did you have that like conversation about the librarians and their role? They're like, we never did. None of our classes ever talked about it we really don't understand what you do. And I'm like, I know, <laughs> I see that all the time. And so the, the superintendents and the administration don't know what we do. And parents don't fully understand what we do. Students don't always understand what we do. And teachers don't always understand what we do because they aren't exposed as much to it. The only people that really sort of start to understand what they do are people that hang around with the library <laughs> enough time to sort of, to start to realize. And I think we need to get ourselves into positions where we can make changes. And so I've been able to this year institute some changes within the South Orange Maplewood School District because I am using that influence and my power. And I think we have to look for ways to get librarians at the table. We talk about wanting to be at the table, but librarians sort of need to step up and, and try to get to the table because it's really important. I'm the only school librarian in the state of New Jersey that is on a school board. I put something out there. <laughs> which everybody might have seen and I was like to like Facebook groups like hey I want to know are you is there anybody else a librarian and nobody there was one other person in California and actually and then there was one from British Columbia so technically there were two other librarians that responded back I can't believe one that that's the right number I want to believe that there are more of us 
Mm-hmm. But even so, if we can count on like, you know, one hand, the number of librarians, that's a problem. And we need to start to figure out ways to, to make that difference. Well, and I, like how, I like how you said, um, you know, we always talk about, I, I say it all the time that we need to get a seat at the table. Yeah. I think sometimes that's hard for people, maybe if they're just starting out or they've been in a role for a long time, or maybe they're not valued, whatever the reason might be to even understand like the, not only like, how do I do that? But like the why, and you said something earlier too, about like, even the verbiage, like in, uh, you know, what your town or district says about librarians, what it says within our state policies. And it's so important because a lot of times I think that people, another thing we need to do is really know what those policies are. And then maybe we come to like, okay, this is the why that I have to get involved. So, yeah, I mean, I didn't realize, and I've been like very vocal and an educational advocate outside of, you know, for a long time. And I always thought, you know, I don't know, I I thought the school board role was a little different than it was until you get to be a part of the the school board. And you realize that a lot of your work revolves around setting policy and procedures and making sure things are implemented correctly. Um, It's not really like fully running the day-to-day schools, which everybody thinks that we do, but it's really more like setting the policies and making sure things are being implemented properly. And I, when I got on the school board, I was put on policy committee and I was like, oh, policy committee, like that's the the committee I want to be a part of. But I, 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 but I'm happy I am because this committee, we write the policies. You know, we, we, we do it within conjunction with administration, but we have a big say as to what goes into our policies. So one of the policies that I asked that we review because it hadn't been reviewed in a long time was our resource material policy, AKA sometimes it's called the library policy, but it's resource materials and it's books and educational items that come into your schools. Um, So it could be textbooks, it could be library books, it could be any classroom library materials, anything like that. It hadn't been updated in years. Most of you guys probably have not had your policy updated in years. The policy in the state of New Jersey is number 2350, if anybody is like, you know, wants to look. But look at the last time that has been updated. I'm telling you, it probably hasn't been updated in a long time. But it needs to be, because the problem is we are starting to see challenges. We are starting to see people come in and say, you know, start to try to dictate what shows up in our our schools and our libraries. And if you don't have a good policy in place, there's a chance that those materials might not survive. So having a good resource policy that talks about the idea that you want diverse books Mm-hmm. And you want, you know, differing viewpoints, but only to a point, you know, there's got to be sometimes when you're not going to get an opposing viewpoint on things like, for say, the Holocaust, um, or there that you want books that represent the children and the uh, in your schools, but also children in general. So you want school books that have that not only deal with, you know, diverse religions, but also sexual orientations and, and, you know, diverse viewpoints and diverse ways of thinking. You want to make sure that, and in that policy, so not only are we talking about the physical materials that we're, we have, but we in South Orange Maple would combine two policies together and sort of got rid of our library policy, but we, we mixed it in with who is in charge, you know, like who does that resource materials or the library materials. And I made sure that in this policy, now, you know, I'm giving away a little secret here, (laughs) that um, I put the word certified school librarian in to that policy. And I did it because I wanted to make sure that 
and we have had a history in South Orange Maplewood prior to me being on the Board of Education of them removing librarians, that by putting the words certified school librarian into a policy, it makes it harder for you to remove that person. And I did it multiple places. And I did it where I was like, you know, the certified, the certified school librarian will be the one doing this. The certified school librarian will be doing this. And I outlined exactly sort of what their role was to make it so that they were valued and that they it was clear in the policy that it would and it would be harder to get rid of them. Yeah, good for you. I mean, think of the impact that you'll have not only on your job and your job as a librarian, but also on the school board, but even like for the future, you know, or even saying this for people to even, you know, reference what you've done, like that's going to make a huge difference for not only your town, but for others. Right. So I've sort of taken this and I modeled it, but you know, I'm not trying to take full credit for this. I modeled it after um, Martha Hickson in um, mm -hmm. West Windsor. I think it's West Windsor, Plainsboro. I can't remember. No, I'm not sure it's West Windsor. North Hunterton, sorry, New Jersey. She rewrote hers uh, not too long ago and with the help. And so I modeled some of it after that policy. And I looked around and modeled pieces of it, but I wanted to make sure that we had something in place that would be a model, not only for us, but for other schools to use. And that was progressive in its nature and was also fit with the ALA yeah. and the AS, um, you know, all of those standards. And we referenced those. We were in the policy, we referenced the ALA. We reference other organizations that are talking about keeping diverse materials and books and, and the power behind having that stuff. So I wanted to make sure that our policy was done in that way so that Years from now, I'm going to be off the Board of Education, but when something happens or there's a challenge or there's an issue, you have to look at the board policy first. And it's all based on the response by the school board, the response by the, the administration is based on that policy. So if that policy is written in a good way that clearly outlines things, it's harder for them to change things because then they're going against their own law and their own policy. Yeah, I um, agree. And one thing I think of too, Alyssa, is when people are listening, like like me, I think I sit here and think like I'm not a member of the school board, but my school board is super supportive of what we do. And they know what we do because I tell my story. Yeah. And when I'm invited to come to the school board and present, which is every year because I make sure that that is important for them, I never say no, I always say yes and invite yeah. those school board members to not only you know, if it's through social media or through a newsletter or blog post or whatever, but even inviting them to be part of the experiences our kids have or the activities or something special um, so they, they know and, and to make sure that they understand that importance. And I think that that has made a huge difference, not only within my school, um, but I think about even like the state of Iowa, we have some strong leaders you know, not just myself, but others who have made sure that they have that close connection with their school board members, their administrators, people in the community, and that they're, they're making sure people understand that. But you've taken it to this next level that it makes me want to be on the school board. <laughs> True. Um, but no, but that is so important. And I think that that's important too. Like I love if I get invited into a classroom yeah. or get invited to an event. And I try to make, try to make those events. Now, you know, um, I also am a big, like tag me in social media. Like, I wanna see what you're doing. I try to follow some of the teachers, but I don't know a lot, you know, like everybody. So, um, you know, I want to, um, when I was a teacher in this same district that I now am at a different district so I can be on the school board, I invited school board members in when we did like our virtual debates, which you guys were a part of, 
our school board members were like moderators I for remember it. that they you know and that's so important because then they see the value in what you're doing and how you're doing it and and i think that that is such an important factor because then when they go to cut things it's a little harder to do that because they've seen what's going on yeah. and it also needs to be known <laughs> that you need to make yourself your voice known because i as a school board member i'm all the time getting letters and you know when something goes wrong we know we're going to hear from these five people or that these things are going to happen and that we're going to predict okay well we're cutting the librarians so i'm expecting the librarians to show up and and yell about it but I'm not expecting if the librarian students from the past come and talk because I put more weight on the on students. So if I get students writing to me, I make sure that I always write back to them. And I because their voice is so important. If I'm hearing from, you know, community members that I might not have known of the past and they're speaking, well, they're going to weigh a little more than and I know that sounds. You know, it doesn't, I guess it's just a perspective that people need to realize is that you're, we're expect, you know, when, when teachers talk and others talk, we're, we, we sort of understand where, what their perspective is, what they're coming from. So it's getting those other people mm -hmm. that you might not think about to be, to be those voices are going to be helpful in situations where if we're looking at cutting jobs or we're cutting positions or even in general. Mm -hmm. is going to be, you know, something that is so important. Yeah, I think this conversation, I mean, can make such an impact because I think about, you know, again, like being inspired, if it's to be on the school board, if it's to be part of a committee, if it's yeah. to join a PLC, like the whole message here is get yourself a seat at the table and, and we have to step up. I mean, more than any other job, within schools, I think that we have to be heard and, and we have so many things to be able to share on how we can be leaders. And that's the message that I love that you always share because you've done a great job, not only in this role, um, but not being afraid to speak up, you know, for librarians. And, and I think librarians are ultimately, a lot of us are afraid to speak up. I, I think that's just the nature of the job. I don't know. I feel like it's the nature of the job in some way. And I and I don't mean to um, disparage us in any way. But we are always like the helpers, the like, I'll find you the answer. And then, you know, we'll do the research for you, but you come up with your own opinion and you speak about it. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's just always how I, I was for a long time in my life that way. And then I decided, no, I need to start speaking up because I know what's right and I know it's good. And I need to start speaking up for my students. I need to start speaking up for other people and, and to really try to help make some changes. And it's, a, it's, not, <laughs> it's not easy. We've been through a lot. I mean, this year has been really, really hard. Um, <laughs> you can just Google South Orange Maplewood and see some of the things that I've gone through in this past year. But I think having that voice, I don't always win, um, not by any means. I'm, a, I'm in the minority on my school board right now. So I'm not always being able to pass policy or make a lot of the changes I make. But what I do have is my voice and I, tend, I use it to, you know, to help to try to make things better for the students or at least let people know my views on what's going on well and, and they'll remember that too yeah and they'll and they'll remember that you know like the, those are the things that even if maybe you are the minority right now in the back of their head they remember the voice that you had and and i mean and, that's that's the big thing and, and i think so and I, it's funny because we always joke like <laughs> um i saw that this year on sort of the campaign trail because for um you know i i was I, I wasn't running, but you, I, I was thinking people were like, Alyssa, you need help. You, you, who running now is going to help you? Because 
you need some help like your voice is what i'm i'm happy to hear your voice but i need others so that you can you know that voice can can help and and i was like oh wait people are actually listening <laughs> like oh uh -oh. i'll listen to you <laughs> i i love it well this I, I mean this really i always appreciate how you push my thinking and i know that people listening will appreciate it too because you're not afraid to speak up and we like you said in the beginning, you know, step up and take a lead librarians, because I think that's just a huge message. And, and I, I do, I one do. that will make a difference. I do think it's something we really have to do. We, we've, we've done a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, but now we have to step up and take the lead. And that means running for school board. Um, and it, and there are organizations that will help people who have never done it before. Many, if you're in New Jersey, the NJEA, which you're usually a part of in the union, they have workshops and classes. Now I didn't take them, but you know, on how to help, you know, build leaders, there's organizations that will help you. You know, um, every library, you know, there, there's people that will help if you're thinking about, re, you know, wanting to run for school board or run for a position or run for a state office or or stuff like that, 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 that can help you with that. I am always available and I will talk you through like everything I did, <laughs> but I think it's so important. I don't want to be the only librarian in the state of New Jersey. Like, and I don't want to be the one of three in the nation. Like that's insane to me. Um, well, I, I think this is people. a start girl and I know, I'm determined. <laughs> I, mean, I think that's awesome. So when people, when you say people can follow what you're saying, where do they find you on social? So on social, you can just go to Twitter at Alyssa, E-L-I-S-S-A, Malaspina, M-A-L-E-S-P-I-N-A. Um, I am um, AlyssaMalaspina.com. You can also get hold of me that way. Dude, you'll find me. Like I'm the only Alyssa <laughs> Malaspina out there. If you spell my name anywhere close, you're gonna find stuff on me and my contact information. And I really am. We'll make sure to share it too. I always, I always love talking to you. And I mean, I'm fired up. So people are going to be fired up. And I hope so. I hope they do. We appreciate everything you do. And yeah, you're Thank awesome. You. So keep, keep doing your great stuff. And we're so happy that you joined us for this podcast. I am so happy too. And I am coming to you in my cozy outfit today. <laughs> a little bad i was like i didn't know we were gonna like videotape it it's daylight savings me so <laughs> dude i'm on dead by like four now <laughs> i know i love it oh well thank you my friend thank, thank you, you for joining and a big thanks to everybody for joining and especially to our friends at Follett for sponsoring our podcast and future ready librarians so until next time thank you and we'll talk soon Thank you for joining us for the Future Ready Librarian podcast, Leading from the Library. I would like to also thank our sponsor, Follett Learning, for their amazing continued support.